This week, I've got a request. No, uh, I'm making a request. No, Ellie, you're taking a request. Welcome to Jewish Music Toronto. I am Ellie. Remember that all of our lesson and sing-along videos are closed captioned, so if you want to follow along, all you have to do is click the CC button at the bottom of the YouTube player. A few months ago, I received a request to do a very specific piyot, and finally, this week is the best opportunity for that, because the holiday of Shavuot, the festival of weeks, or the feast of weeks in English, is next week. Shavuot, from the Hebrew word weeks, is the holiday where Jews celebrate the day we receive the Torah at Har Sinai, Mount Sinai. And it's one of the three major pilgrimage festivals on our calendar, along with Pesach and Sukkot. Uh, where we would go to visit and bring offerings at the temple in Jerusalem. Shavuot falls exactly seven weeks, hence the name, after the start of Pesach, and the lead up to the holiday is actually marked by a sphera, or counting, of each night between the second night of Pesach and the night before Shavuot begins. In the Orthodox world, it's quite important. Even LL Cool J will tell you that. Thank you to Girl Action Figure on Tumblr for sharing that one. Now, because Shavuot falls on a Sunday and Monday this year, it's unlikely that I'll be posting a regular lesson video on Monday or even Monday night next week. But I do hope to have something for you next week regardless. And if you're already subscribed to JMT and regularly watch our videos, you should get immediately notified when whatever it is goes online. And if you aren't subscribed yet, good news. If you're on a desktop, it's super easy. All you need to do is click here and follow the instructions. And if you're watching elsewhere, you'll need to follow the link in the video's description. Back to the holiday. Along with Pesach, Shavuot is one of my favorite holidays, and that's due in large part to the food factor. Many families that observe Shavuot will specifically eat only dairy products during the holiday, or specifically have a dairy meal on the evening of the holiday because it's said that before they received the Torah, the Jews did not know the laws of kashrut, ritual slaughter, etc. So they decided to err on the side of caution and stick to dairy. There are also a number of other potential reasons you'll see in the resource links I've included below. No matter the reason, it works out swimmingly for me because I love dairy. Some of the dishes we've had over the years include quiche, blintzes, creamy rice and broccoli, and one of my absolute personal favorite dairy desserts, cheesecake. Observance for the holiday includes your typical extended evening, morning, and afternoon prayer services, the reading of Megillat Ruth, that's the Book of Ruth, and an all-night Torah study session that typically runs from a couple of hours after dinner until just before the morning prayer services. One story told for why we stay up all night boils down to one simple problem. On the morning we were supposed to receive the Torah, we overslept and Moshe had to go around waking up the entire camp, making us late to receive it. Whether that was because we were partying too hard the night before, or because we were so zealous in our preparations for the day ahead that we were just completely gone is up for debate. But that's one story. Of course, you can find other interpretations for why we do these various things via the links in the description below. This week we're doing an Aramaic piyut, or poem, that for us folks outside of Israel falls on the second day of Shavuot. It's called Yitziv Pitgam, certain or steadfast is our praise, and it, along with the Akdamu, which is also read on Shavuot, praises God and God's power and omnipotence. Or, as Dr. Lawrence Schiffman of Yeshiva University wrote in his 2011 essay, Yitziv Pit Gum, one of our last Aramaic Piyut team, Yitziv Pit Gum describes the majesty of the revelation that took place at Har Sinai and closes with a prayer for the protection of those who keep the Torah. It is yet another one of those JMT favorites, an acrostic. The beginning of each verse spells out the name Yaakov ben Meir Levi. Dr. Schiffman, possibly pulling from research by a renowned liturgical scholar, Ismar Elbogen, believes this to be a reference to Rabbeinu Tam, 
the grandson of Rashi. A further reading by Toronto native cantor Michael Kraussman, who now calls Omaha Nebraska home, suggests that there may actually be some controversy as to whether or not that is actually the correct Yaakov ben Meir Levi. As you may know from some of our previous episodes, it's not like this is the first time that's happened with acrostic authorship. Crossman's own article on Yitzhiv Become also leads to some information about its melody. However, beyond the arrangement, which, don't get me wrong, is amazing to have available, we can't find much about who actually wrote it. As Kraussman puts it, it's ancient. Since the piyut is a bit longer and more difficult, I'm just going to do the first couple of lines here and go through the complete melody. And I'm going to do my best to do the entire piyut for the sing-along, but I am not making any promises. The lyrics are Yitziv pitgam le'at udgam Certain or steadfast is our praise of Hashem, who is the sign and mark Bribo rvin i rin who stands out among the myriad of angels, Rin. Ane ana biminyana, I call out this praise in the presence of a minyan, that's the gathering of at least ten men necessary for a prayer service. Also, that's a very literal translation. Art Scroll, for instance, translates it very differently. Aramaic is hard. Defa selin alba tu rin, that are inscribed or possibly written in the four rows or mountains. Did I mention Aramaic is hard? And what's up with that rin? Did you notice that each of the line ends in rin, yet the translation is different? That's because it's not actually included in the translation. So what is it? After all the searching I've done trying to find out, all I've found is that it's just a syllable. My best guess is that it's like saying Amen, but don't hold me to that, it's just a guess. If you've seen information on that, I would love to know. Now for the complete melody itself. Remember that it alternates back and forth after each two lines. It goes... Yitziv pit gam leat ud gam bribo rivin irin ane ana bimin yana defasilin arba tu rin. I'll repeat that again to help you pick it up. Yitziv pit gam leat ud gam bribo rivin irin. That's it for this week's lesson. Be sure to come back on Wednesday for our sing-along to Yitzhi Pitgam. I'm going to do my best to have the whole thing down for you. If you're enjoying our videos, be sure to subscribe and share. We really appreciate the support. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash jewishmusictoronto and on Tumblr at jewishmusicdatabase.tumblr.com. Thanks for watching and bye for now.